I think for me, this was the most requested mini PC review this year. I heard ya, asked minis for them, and after some wrangling, here it is, the AIX1. A very different mini from the AIX1 Pro. This one's a more Nux style mini PC instead of the Mac inspiration of the Pro. Also, there's no co-pilot button, fingerprint sensor, or inbuilt power supply. I'm liking it already. There's also a different CPU, which is housed in an aluminium alloy case. Hmm, premium. But the undercarriage is plastic, flexes with a bit of pressure, and even squeaks. Back to the CPU. This particular model features the AMD Ryzen 7 H255, one we haven't looked at before. AMD is never one to let Intel get away with a terrible CPU naming scheme, so they've gone ahead and just outright copied it. Oh, okay, okay. They moved the H from the end of it to the front and put a space in between the numbers. How original. My mistake. So what is the 255H? I mean, H255? It looks to be a refresh of the 8745HS for the Chinese market. An 8-core, 16-thread chip with Radeon 780M graphics. On the Mini's forum website, it comes in at US$511 for the 32GB RAM, 1TB SSD combo. The AIX1 is also available with the Ryzen H260, and that's a refresh of the 8845HS, which has similar performance to what we're looking at. And there's also the newer generation Ryzen AI9-365, which is a slightly worse AI9-HX370 chip. Did you follow all that? No? I don't blame you. Complete failure on the branding side. Mini's forum includes a pretty compact 19V 120W power supply with this Mini, along with a HDMI cable, VESA mount with screws, and an M.2 to Oculink adapter. Yep, you're going to have to sacrifice the second M.2 storage slot if you plan to use an Oculink eGPU. The AI credentials need to be pushed somehow, and this mini includes a microphone and speakers, neither of which produce very good audio quality. They just do the job for voice related tasks. Talk to Windows Copilot or don't. Have it talk to you or don't. The choice is yours or it isn't. How much do you trust Microsoft not to be com- on the front of the AIX1 are two 10 gigabit USB Type-A ports, a USB 4 Type-C port, audio jack, and clear CMOS hole. Mini's forum has opted for a MediaTek Wi-Fi 7 chip for wireless and Bluetooth. The back has a Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN jack, DisplayPort 2.0, Oculink if you sacrifice one M.2 storage slot, another USB 4, and unlike the port on the front, this one supports power and display using one USB-C cable. There's also HDMI 2.1 FRL and a USB 2 Type-A. At least another USB 2 would have been nice for those using a wide mouse and keyboard, but that's all we get. All right, let's open it up to add the Oculink adapter. It was a glorious day when Mini's forum stopped hiding the screws under glued on rubber feet. Anyway, once the four screws are out, Carefully lift the lid as there are a couple of cables attached. It's cooling for the RAM and SSD, but the thermal pad still has the thin protective plastic on it. Looks like they forgot to remove it at the factory. Well, we'll thermal test it as is. 32GB of crucial DDR5-5600 is included in this one, along with a Kingston PCIe Gen 4 drive. I'll just add the Oculink adapter in the second Gen 4 slot. The M.2 wireless card is under the included SSD. Unless you go with the barebones me, Windows 11 Pro will be pre-installed on the storage drive and a scan for malware and rootkits came back clean. The latest Ubuntu at the time of this video works without issues. Okay then, let's see if the H255 does perform like an 8745HS and what better way to compare it than by using the Minis Forum UM870 with that exact CPU. Single core Cinebench is around the same for both, with a 28 points difference not meaning much. Interestingly though, the UM870 did better in multi-core. When we switch the BIOS profile to performance, the AIX1 matches the balance profile of the UM870. Geekbench single core also shows an insignificant loss for the AIX1, while the UM870 wins in multi-core, same as it did in Cinebench. Nothing major, 
but clearly better. In the short H.264 video encoding test, the AI X1 matched the speed of the UM870 in encoding the file. Same with performance mode. The AV1 file takes much longer to encode, and just like we saw in Cinebench and Geekbench, the AI X1 loses out to the UM870. With the performance mode enabled, it still doesn't catch up to the balance profile on the UM870, which is around 2.5% faster when comparing the same profiles. The AV1 GPU encoding test is a little bit worse than the UM870. Switching to performance mode made no difference. For the Geekbench AI CPU test, I don't have the score for the UM870, but I do have it for the Chewy Mini PC, which uses the same CPU, and here they're pretty much neck and neck. Where the AI X1 does really well is in the AI GPU test, taking the top spot for the quantized result. Moving on to other integrated graphics tests with 3 Mark, where the AI X1 shares the upper end of the chart with all the Radeon 780M graphics chips. It's not the fastest, but there's little separating the best and worst scores in all three benchmarks. When it comes to games, the Radeon 780M has been covered extensively on the channel. It's good for esports with high frame rates at 1080p. Since my buddy Nick from Gear Seekers gifted me Call of Duty Black Ops 6, I wanted to try his benchmark tool and see how the Radeon 780M performs. On the basic graphics preset, it's close to a 60fps average. And that's with FSR turned off since I want the native rendering performance result. Otherwise you can play many games at 1080p low with at least 30fps if you're okay with that. Although more and more new releases don't even manage to hit that frame rate. So the only option is FSR upscaling, which might not always hit that target either. For the eGPU test, I wanted to show the difference between USB 4 and Oculink in Black Ops 6 side by side using the same RTX 4070 Super graphics card. There can be a huge jump in frame rate for Oculink, depending on how much bandwidth the game needs. As you can see here, it's doing much better than USB 4. The Ryzen H 255 is powerful enough to handle most emulators without issue. Even PS3 emulation with one of the tougher games to emulate is close to full speed at 1080p. Happy to report there's no issue with audio latency on the AI X1 with Cinebench running in the background for a worst case scenario test. I'm slowly gathering data for Adobe Photoshop and Premiere using Puget Bench. Unsurprisingly, the AI X1 beats the U series chips easily in Photoshop and Adobe Premiere, where it scores more than double. The included Kingston NVMe drive did not do well in 3D Mark Storage Benchmark, or the lowest Gen 4 score so far. Its maximum temp on the controller did stay under 90C, but the plastic should be removed if it hasn't been already for a better result. Bluetooth range isn't great at just over 3 meters or 10.5 feet. For the wireless test, I played a game of Valorant at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band to test the connection. Any latency or dropouts are quickly shown as a connection problem notification, but the AIX one worked just fine. This is another mini PC with very low idle power draw of just 7 watts, and the maximum was around 100 out of the box with a performance profile pushing an extra 7 watts. Those extra 7 watts add a few degrees to the maximum CPU temp, which hit as high as 92 in performance mode. Overall fan noise is down a little bit over the UM870 Slim, though it's nothing amazing around average against the competition. Personally, I'd stick to the balance mode over the performance profile. Now we come to the volume chart. 
The AI X1 is a bit bigger than the UM870, not a big difference. The delete key on startup will get you into the BIOS. In advanced, you can change the power limit setting. It's set to balance mode by default. ACPI setting has wake on LAN. Hardware monitor allows you to pick from a few fan profiles, but not create your own. In NBIO common options, GFX configuration, you can set the VRAM limit. FCH has the AC power loss option and SMU common options lets you set the power limit manually. That's the Mini's Forum AI X1 covered in detail. A pretty interesting mini PC. I like its metal case, inclusion of an Oculink port, and dual USB 4. It's nice to see Wi Fi 7 at this price point. However, there is a lack of USB ports in general, and you'll lose one of the M.2 slots for Oculink. Also, Bluetooth range could be better. Mini's Forum's AIX1 reminds me of the B-Link Sur 8, but with an Oculink port and without the wireless issues. Although the Sur 8 is a far quieter mini PC, which is a big positive for me. Overall, the AIX1 is pretty good. That being said, Mini's Forum's AIX1 Pro takes things even further with a larger design and more fancy features. You can check out the review of it right here. Cheers.